As part of our ongoing discussion on the importance of collaboration to solving the problems of sustainability, we're joined today by Hank De Bruin, Global Head of Sustainability at Philips. So what would you say then to, you know, the cynics, and there are still plenty of them out there who say that, you know, sustainability and corporate responsibility is really primarily a marketing function. I would say it's important that, that companies develop robust strategies to address both sides of the story. I think we need strategies that drive actual sustainable performance. On the other hand, it's also, I think, important to have a positive impact on the environment and communities in which these companies operate. And, and this is where awareness and communication of your sustainability strategy comes to play. But the big difference, for I think, if you look at front-runner companies nowadays compared to the past, is that it really helps them to drive their company better and to create more value. And I, I see really change that has happened, I think, over the last uh, 10 years, past years, where sustainability issues have become really a, a wider discussion topic uh, of the general public, uh, general public, I would say. Mm -hmm. Uh, one major driving of this change, I think, has been social media, uh, which has connected many millions of people all over the world and, and fueled the public conversation much more in this area. Now, even local issues, uh, you know, which traditionally would only reach a small and, and committed audience will spread through the online community, reaching millions of people instantly. And I think that's very relevant with regard to the, the speed of change. And also from that perspective, communication about sustainability has become a much more two-directional and, and conversational goal, also for companies, instead of just broadcasting through marketing campaigns. And this requires a complete level and different level of transparency, I would say. So this idea that you brought up around how transparency is, is everywhere increasingly, does that require that, that sustainability programs um, and, and corporate responsibility, you know, that there's, there's something real and tangible there about making the world a better place just because so many folks are looking at what you're doing. Now, you're absolutely right. And, and the word genuine I like very much uh, with regard to this respect. And I think that you see also companies that are in front runner positions in this area to a certain extent uh, where we luckily as a company are one of uh, are the ones that have a, a long history and, and usually started often like a, a family uh, activity of a group of family members and then suddenly they evolved and, and the values of those companies are really intrinsically in the, in, in the company, both at the social and the ecological side, where, which you see reflected also in, in, in our company's approach. You know, the, the standard phrase is that it's in our DNA. Well, it's indeed in the DNA of Philips. Can you really solve sustainability problems alone, um, even though you've got all the right DNA, does, or does it require more than that? Uh, it absolutely requires more than that. Uh, what we've learned from the beginning and now you see evolving in developments, for instance, like circular economy, um, you need to oversee the overall value chain. And that means that uh, from a company perspective, you really need to understand what your position is in the value chain and what's before you, what's more upstream and what's after you, much more downstream. And you, you, in many, many cases, you can only solve problems and find solutions if you go into a mode of co-creation where you, you know, work with your customers, but also work with your suppliers in order to solve the problems, but at the same time also to create more value. And I think a very important element of that is also that you are getting used to the fact that you need to share the value. If you do it together, that it cannot be so that only one company takes all the profit. And you really need to work together and share that value in order to improve, you know, the overall value chain and at the same time improve the social and the ecological impact. Yeah. How do you think about this from a competitive perspective? I mean, there are certainly firms out there, maybe competitors of yours, who, who don't take as co-creative an approach. So do you see your approach as a... As a, as a competitive advantage? And wh why don't you think other firms uh, 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 adopt the same approach? Well, uh, you know, obviously it's a first mover advantage all along, uh, m meaning that uh, we think that we can have a competitive advantage by doing so. Uh, obviously, we will expect that competitors will follow at some moment in time, uh, and, and, but that's the normal way of running a business anyway. Yeah. Uh, so if you're earlier, you do it faster and, and better, you can have really the, the advantage. 
Um, at the same time, we also to a certain extent collaborate with our competitors. Uh, but the co-creation part is much more in the value chain, uh, while the collaboration part, for instance, with competitors, is more in the area of, you know, creating a level playing field if we talk about legislative requirements, just to mention. Or at, at the business side, uh, if you go to different business models and models of, of a circular economy, where we talk much more about remanufacturing, refurbishment, spare parts harvesting and material reuse, uh, together with competitors, you, you try to convince, for instance, governmental bodies mm. who in many, many situations are, you know, also big customers of companies to see whether or not they want to change their attitude in their tendering processes and in the green procurement activities of those governmental bodies. So that there you collaborate together in order to create a level playing field. And then still you come in with the normal guy of, you know, being competitive uh, between the, uh, the the competitors all along. So, so what, I mean, just... You personally, I mean, you're, you're leading a, a huge global corporation on the sustainability front. What gives you hope? Where is your source of hope for, for the next 10 years and, and beyond? Well, well, first of all, uh, I would say the fact that you see now in a number of companies that sustainability uh, is not a separate strategy, but it's part of the strategy of the company. Yeah. And, and, you know, at high level, you know, executives are convinced that they will help, that it help to drive value. That, that's one thing. Secondly, um, we always as a company are using a, a simple approach where we have, in fact, a graph with two axes. One on the y-axis, the ecological side, and the other one is the, the social side, where you can plot in countries. And then you see an interesting graph where people on the social side have a low a quality of life and a, a relatively low ecological footprint, as we call it. But people with a, a quality of life like you and I, you know, we have a high quality of life, but at the same time, a high ecological footprint. And if you then start looking what a sustainable society is all about, that's in fact that we have all a relatively high quality of life with 9 billion people on the planet in 2050 uh, within the boundaries of one planet. Now, if you put that as a picture in front of you and you ask what gives me hope, then I can say there are so many examples where you see movements both on the Y-axis in improving quality of life, but at the same time reducing ecological footprint from a technological perspective that uh, the old thinking uh, 30, 40 years ago, you know, that we all need to give in and it's not possible. I'm absolutely convinced and there are many, many examples showcasing that is possible. You know, simply the fact that if you put, you know, uh, a number of solar cells in Sahara with the size of France, you can generate all the electricity that you need on, on a global planet. Now, our, you know, our society may made a decision to go for fossil fuels because we didn't know any better. We didn't have the technology 120 or 30 years ago. And if we would have done made a decision now, we should have done it differently. But only that 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 that, that idea probably gives me hope to go for the better future. And there are so many, many innovations in our company that really is driving that forward. That gives me energy. And I think that's where it's coming from. 